Back here, we're at, uh, doing another little piece of the repair. I think this will kind of be the final thing before I got myself a rolling chassis. Um, so I'm working on this uh, control arm here. This is the arm that goes from out at the back wheel and in and ties to the transaxle. And so it locates it side to side and keeps things all in order there. As I was putting these all back together a while back, I got to looking at them, especially at this end. I'm like, that bolt's going through there at a really weird angle. And it's got the bushing all pushed out of shape and everything. And and I got to looking at it, and it's going to be really hard to see, but on this end, I've got, to, it's running up to the right, if you can see it on there. And the opposite end should be exactly um, parallel to that. But what happened, see it's not, this one's going up to the left. The other one is going up to the right. They should both be going up to the right. So what happened, if you remember back, I talked about this car had been in a wreck of some kind. And the more I'm getting into it, the more evidence I'm finding of that. Uh, but this is another one of those things. This control arm got bent. And uh, somebody straightened it out. And in order to straighten it, they cut it apart. You can see a weld right here. So they'd cut it apart and probably straightened the pipe out some or maybe even found another one but I don't know this looks bent and dented so I suspect they must have just straightened it somehow and then they welded it back together the only problem is why in the world would you not pay attention and get the thing welded back the right direction but they've got the let's say the top end of it here turned 180 degrees so they'd done that, they'd put that weld in there um, in the middle and then to make sure that uh, it was strong enough, they've got a sleeve inside of there that's maybe oh, three or four inches long, I'm guessing. And then they drilled these two holes and put some bolts through them and smashed the heads, kind of like rivets, thinking that was going to make it stronger, which I tend to disagree with. When I get done with it, I'm going to plug weld those holes back up so it ties it to that uh, sleeve that's in there better and that way I can smooth it up and it'll look better too but anyway so I've started here I've uh, drilled those or uh, ground the heads off of those bolts there you can see my grinder marks and uh, knocked them out and then I've taken my cutoff wheel and cut myself a uh, groove all the way around it that I believe is through the first layer of metal but not the second. So now what I'm hoping is that they're not rusted together so bad that I can't get it to turn in there. So I'm going to be putting in the vise and trying to uh, get some kind of a leverage thing on the end of it here so I can see if I can twist that around. And if I can then I'll be in good shape and I'll just weld her back up and plug weld those holes up and touch up the paint and then I'll be able to put the thing back in. I'm not sure. I might even have a new bushing for that. I'll have to look and see. So anyway, that's my project. I think when I get this done I will have fixed everything the way it's supposed to be and I will have myself a rolling chassis that's ready to move on to the next part here. So I'm gonna be working on this. See if I can get that done off camera and then I'll come back and show you what I accomplished. Alright, so I had the thing in my vise and uh, put that great big honking crescent wrench on it to try to twist those pieces and uh, rather than twisting they just broke off and I'm okay with that. So the sleeve inside of it's alright. Um, what I found then, or my decision has been, that I need a sleeve inside to strengthen that or something. And uh, I don't have anything that's exactly the right size as far as tubing goes so what I did is went to my bolt bucket and I found this great big old bolt that fits in there and it actually uh, will go in and it's not perfectly tight but it's close enough what I really need is something that kind of keeps it from moving too much so I'm going to 
cut the head off of that bolt and clean the rust off of it so I got something good to weld to. I'll probably come in here and clean this weld up here so I've got a nice smooth surface. Um, the best way to keep these straight is to clamp them in a piece of angle iron. And I'm going to see if I've got one that I can do that with. But I'm going to do all that prep work to it first. So I'll be back at that point and probably have it ready and set up to weld. I'm also going to bevel the edges of the tubing back um, so that I can get really good penetration on my weld all the way down to that bolt. Because I want to actually weld to that bolt so the sleeve, the old sleeve, and the new tubing both are actually physically welded to that bolt. And that will also be accomplished by welding through um, the old uh, pin holes that they had there at this point. So I'm going to get to that point, clean her up, cut the head off, and we'll be back. Alrighty then, here we are back on the project. So, here I'm going to show you what I've done here to prep this thing. So told you I was going to cut the head off the bolt. We got that done. Um, I took it to my wire wheel, started cleaning it up, and the rust was uh, just too thick on there. So I, I cleaned the worst of it off, but then I took my grinder, and you'll see I've ground some other areas real lightly there so I can get down some real fresh metal. Um, and then I, out here, sorry, trying to do this one-handed. I also cleaned up some areas where I know I'm going to be welding through those uh, bolt holes there. So I've got that all prepped up, ready to go. Uh, I took, this is the one that had the weld bead on it, I took that weld bead and smoothed it up around there because I want it cosmetically to look better. And when I'm done with all this, I'm going to have plenty of strength, so I'm going to grind all my welds down to where um, it looks like a solid piece of steel going through there, steel tubing. So I took both of these and I flattened the end um, of my cut there to uh, make, sh make sure that it had um, the gap, the width of the cutting wheel all the way through it. So I flattened that and then I went in and added a V along the edge of it there, which I think you can see in that picture, so that uh, I could get my weld clear down to that cutoff bolt that I'm putting in there. So that when I weld it, I'm not just welding the tubing together, but I am welding it to that bolt. And that's going to give us a ton of extra strength in there. So I did that, ground uh, everything back away from where I'm going to be welding, so I don't have any problems with uh, contamination from the paint. Then I took a larger drill bit and just drilled those holes out so that I've got nice clean metal inside of them now. And that's going to allow me to have a good solid weld in there instead of welding to rusty metal. Which you can do and it works pretty good, but it it just this is going to be a much better penetration. And especially where this is a strength piece that does need to be a, have a certain degree of strength to it, that's going to allow me to uh, put that together and make it happen. So, um, the one thing you're going to notice here is that, yeah, I'm putting that giant chunk of metal in there with that bolt, and it is going to add to the weight of this piece. But we're going back to some of the things I discussed uh, earlier when I straightened some things on the front end. This car is designed to be ultra lightweight, and so these pieces of tubing are uh, thin wall tubing. Um, but I am more concerned about strength here than I am about lightweight. And like I said, to go replace these parts uh, with new ones for a Lotus Europa would be probably nearly impossible to buy new ones. I'd have to have them fabricated. And since this is a low buck project, this is what Crazy Dad's Garage does, then I'm going to approach it this way. Yes, I will sacrifice a half a pound of weight there that I'll be added to this thing, but when I'm done welding that up, I'm going to have something that's plenty strong. Uh, once I've ground the welds down, it'll look uh, just like normal, and I'll be happy with it and we'll be safe. So that's the philosophy of what we're doing here. Um, I did think of one other thing while I was grinding on these. 
Uh, if you've ever done much of this, you'll notice when you're grinding on something, especially as you're grinding around the whole thing, it starts to heat up and you get some blue spots. Um, a lot of people don't know this, but those blue spots do need to be ground back off of there because they create a scale that then you have to weld through and it just uh, makes an impurity in your weld and is less strong than it could be. So I did go back around and clean all that blue off of them too. So that's just a little welding tip. So now I'm going to get this set up. i got to find myself a piece of angle iron to clamp it to and get all my pieces in place. And I'll probably show you that right before I start welding on it.